All of this uh, has, has really become a bigger issue now in, in the race to replace Governor McDonnell. Uh, we have a race coming up in November, of course, that will pit uh, the Republican Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli against the Democrat Terry McAuliffe, who's a, a popular Democratic Party fundraiser and perhaps best known as a friend of Bill and Hillary Clinton. So uh, clearly it has become a factor in the race at this point. And polls continue to suggest a close race, uh, generally giving Terry McAuliffe a single digit edge. Robert McCartney is covering the race. He's a local columnist with the Washington Post, part of our team that's been covering this. Bob joins us from the Washington Post newsroom. And, and I'm curious first, Bob, uh, you know, this is a factor. We're seeing it on the airwaves, and we're going to play a few examples in a moment. What are Republicans in the state of Virginia saying about how this could all affect the race? Well, there's a difference between what they say publicly and what they say privately. Well, tell us what they tell you privately. Well, privately, Republicans acknowledge that the scandal is hurting them uh, pretty badly on a number of fronts. Uh, first of all, obviously, it doesn't hurt if the governor is under investigation and there are stories by Roz mainly and some others, uh, you know, once or twice a week, you know, adding fuel to the fire and the governor is a Republican and so it just sort of tarnishes, tends to tarnish the Republican brand, if you will. But in addition to that, you've got an issue where McDonald was a very popular governor and had very high approval ratings and favorability ratings, even among some Democrats and certainly among independents. And Cuccinelli was hoping that McDonald would be able to help him in the campaign and you know, lend his support, lend his prestige, lend his endorsement to Cuccinelli in the campaign. And now Cuccinelli is very wary of having anything to do with McDonald. I mean, he is not seeking to be associated with McDonald uh, that way. So that's a, a drawback. And then in the third way that it hurts uh, Cuccinelli, it, well, Cuccinelli has, has taken some gifts from Johnny Williams Sr. himself, right. uh, not nearly as much money as uh, McDonald did. And he was actually cleared uh, in an investigation of having violated disclosure laws, but he did take gifts and didn't disclose them when he was supposed to. Uh, he has now disclosed them uh, since the story broke. The, so he's tied in a little bit to that scandal. And then finally, uh, hurting Cuccinelli, is the fact that he was hoping to run against Terry McAuliffe by accusing McAuliffe of being kind of sleazy. I mean, McAuliffe, you know, has mainly has no record as an elected official, and his basic background is as a big money campaign fundraiser. And the Republicans have been saying for years, you know, that he skates a little bit too close to the edge when it comes to raising money. So they were hoping to basically slam uh, McAuliffe uh, on ethics issues, and instead the Republicans have huge ethics problems of their own. Now, of course, McAuliffe also has uh, his company, his, the, the company he helped found, the right. electric automotive uh, company, th that's under investigation. So there is certainly still uh, plenty of uh, scandal meat for the Republicans to chew on there. Against all of that backdrop, uh, all the things you mentioned, the fact that the economy in Virginia is still pretty good, and that the governor, despite these indiscretions or alleged indiscretions, remains relatively popular. A poll put out just last week suggests that Terry McAuliffe enjoys a six-point edge over Ken Cuccinelli. This was a, Quinnip a Quinnipiac University poll. Do we have a sense, Bob, why why that's happening? Is it, is it because of the scandal? Is it because Democrats enjoy an enrollment edge and a general enthusiasm edge thanks to last year's presidential race, or what is it? Well, nobody's sure, of course, but I have some theories about it. I mean, first of all, that's I think... why we pay you. That yeah. the, the, what are they? <laughs> I think that the scandal, the, the sort of dueling scandals, I mean, the, you've got the, the, this really big scandal that Ross has been investigating about Star Scientific and Johnny Williams um, and the gifts, which does hit Cuccinelli a little bit. Uh, and then the green tech, the auto scandal, hurting McAuliffe and his just sort of general reputation. I think both of that, I think those have sort of canceled each other out uh, to some extent. And it basically people, maybe it's hurt Cuccinelli a little bit more. But I, to some extent, there, you, let's call that a draw just for argument's sake. Then I think you got people looking at the issues and looking at the candidates. And I think that Cuccinelli, because of his history 
as a Tea Party leader, as a religious right leader, as someone representing very much the you know, most conservative wing of the Republican Party, and McAuliffe very much claiming the middle of the road position, I think that a lot of independents, and if you will, Bill Bowling Virginians, Bill Bowling is of course the lieutenant governor uh, who is more moderate than Cuccinelli right. and isn't endorsing Cuccinelli. I mean, if, if he endorses anybody, he's gonna endorse McAuliffe. Um, you got a lot of moderate Republicans coming out and openly endorsing McAuliffe. And I just think that the way the issues are breaking, uh, it's, it's helping McAuliffe and giving him that small edge right now. But we need to emphasize, it's very early. I mean, yeah. most people, the people who are gonna decide this race, the voters, whose decision, whose choice is going to decide this race, they haven't even started paying attention right. yet. They're just back uh, from the beach. And, and one of the things they're seeing as they turn on their televisions as the kids go back to school, of course, are TV ads. It's one of the most reliable ways to campaign in any state, but especially Virginia, given its sort of disparate media markets. Uh, there are new ads running. Uh, recently, Cuccinelli has addressed a scandal in a new TV ad. Let's take a look at that. We'll talk to Ross and Bob about it on the other side. The truth, there's only one candidate under investigation, Terry McAuliffe. Potential fraud that killed jobs and threatened national security. And the press calls McAuliffe's attacks false. A Democrat Commonwealth attorney cleared Cuccinelli of any wrongdoing. Cuccinelli personally launched the investigation into Bob McDonald and called for immediate reform to strengthen ethics laws. Those are the facts. Lots of things in that ad, but one I want to touch on specifically, Roz, let's ask you first. Uh, the fact there that Cuccinelli says that he was the one that launched the investigation in McDonald's, is that correct? Uh, first of all, this is an absolutely fascinating ad and has really shaken the political establishment in Virginia. It's a sign that uh, Ken Cuccinelli is no longer uh, sort of staying silent and kind of hoping that Bob McDonald isn't going to hurt him. He is uh, separating himself as quickly and as fast as he can from the sitting governor of his own party. It's a pretty astounding moment. Uh, in terms of the facts behind that claim, uh, it is true that uh, the, the Attorney General, Ken Cuccinelli is the Attorney General of the state, uh, is the one who does designated uh, Richmond Commonwealth Attorney Mike Herring uh, to conduct the state investigation. According to state law, if the AG finds uh, credible evidence that an elected official has knowingly violated disclosure laws, he's required actually to designate a Commonwealth Attorney and that's what he did in November uh, 2012. Uh, that said, the investigation that people are really waiting on most closely for right now is the federal investigation right. and uh, it's we don't know, to be fair, uh, what role uh, Ken Cuccinelli might have or, or uh, to be fair, probably did not have in, in starting that piece of the investigation. And Bob, at the beginning of that ad, they make mention of this SEC inquiry into McAuliffe's company called Green Tech. Uh, for those that are more interested in it, frankly, we should just send you to the internets where you can find a story that Fred Kunkel wrote back in, uh, on August 10th that sort of outlines McAuliffe's involvement with this company that involves some Chinese investors as well. Uh, but that also, of course, Bob, is a factor in this race, but doesn't seem to really have punctured McAuliffe just yet. Well, I don't think it helps McAuliffe to have these headlines and to have, I mean, we had headlines just recently. The you know, Securities and Exchange Commission is investigating the company. One, uh, you know, nit I'd like to pick with that ad of Cuccinelli's is it said that McAuliffe is under investigation. Right. It's actually McAuliffe's company that's under investigation. So that's a, a little bit of a difference that, the, that they glossed over in that ad, if you will. You know, I, as I said, I think that um, pe people are going to hold their nose and vote in this election. I mean, both of these candidates are flawed. Um, McAuliffe has no experience as an elected official, very little experience in Virginia state politics, at least holding any office. Uh, he's campaigned, he's been campaigning there a lot for four years. He has this reputation as basically this big money fundraiser uh, going back many, many years. You know, his main claim to fame, as you mentioned, is, you know, as being a friend of the Clintons. Right. Uh, the Clintons are pretty popular, so that doesn't hurt him that much. Uh, but then Cuccinelli has this record as a very conservative Tea Party leader, religious right leader. I mean, Bob McDonald is pretty conservative. Yeah. Uh, no question about that. But Ken Cuccinelli is significantly more conservative, and Ken Cuccinelli was against the, you know, the landmark, historic, bipartisan transportation funding bill, uh, which Governor McDonnell supported, and the, you know, the leadership 
in the in the Republican dominated House of Delegates. Yeah, so let, so you, the, these issues are, I think, what's hurting um, hurting Cuccinelli to a significant extent. Sure, we, we showed a, a Cuccinelli ad. Let's take a look at something that Terry McAuliffe is also airing on Virginia Airwaves. As Governor Bob McDonnell returns thousands of dollars worth of gifts to campaign donor Johnny Williams, Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli says he's not giving anything back. Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli making quite clear tonight he will not be following the governor's lead. Cuccinelli received more than $18,000 worth of gifts. They include a $1,500 catered Thanksgiving dinner, private jet trips, and vacation lodgings. Ken Cuccinelli helping himself, not us. Roz, this ad gets at a broader question I had for you. Um, clearly now, sort of Virginia's relatively squeaky clean political image, a bit tarnished by all this. But what is the state going to do in response to all this, whether or not the governor is ever hauled into court? Uh, yeah, I mean, there have been calls from across the political spectrum, Republican leaders, Democratic leaders, to just totally rewrite the state's uh, laws regarding um, gifts and disclosure. Uh, right now, those laws are considered some of the most lax in the country. You can do pretty much anything. And, uh, you know, story after story with the governor reveals uh, different things that some might characterize as loopholes that he was using to, uh, to justify not disclosing things that a lot of people would think should be disclosed. So, right. I, you know, there are some differences in opinion about precisely what should be done, and they could certainly get tripped up over those differences and have trouble coming to an agreement, but it's probably going to be issue number one, I think, when the uh, General Assembly gathers in Richmond for its legislative session in January. we got we got to run shortly, but we'd be remiss to not ask you how it is that you sort of got started on all this. You, you have led this uh, both for the Post and across Virginia. I mean, you used to cover Richmond. Uh, now you spend most of your time when you're not covering this up on Capitol Hill with myself and a few other colleagues, mm -hmm. but how did this start? You know, like uh, many stories, it started with a tip, uh, a tip from someone I knew from my days in, in Richmond. And um, then it was just a lot of reporting, a lot of uh, gathering of records and documents and calling more people and calling them back and um, gathering things. I mean, I, I think it, there have been a lot of people who have, who have been helpful to the production of the, of the story. And one of the things that I appreciate about it is um, uh, they all have motivations of their own for why they've wanted to help. Um, but, uh, but those motivations for, for almost all of them have at least included in part their feeling that these were not things that should go on that people shouldn't know about, pe right. that people should know about this, and they thought it should get out. And that's why we wanted to talk about it. Roz Helderman, who's been covering this, uh, Robert McCartney, we thank you both for joining us today. Of course, our thanks to all of you for watching. You can keep the conversation going by following Roz at Post Roz and Bob at McCartney WP. Track the show on Twitter at, at Background, and make sure to use the hashtag Postback. Nia Malika Henderson is back in the chair tomorrow. On behalf of Bob McCartney, Roz Helderman, and all of us at the Washington Post, I'm Ed O'Keefe. Thanks for watching. Take care.